most people want to learn how to connect to their loved ones. So the way that you think matters. So if you're carrying anger or resentment or guilt or any of those type of emotions, it's going to affect your connection with your loved one. It's not about not having them. It's not a judgment about having those feelings because everyone has a right in their experience to have those feelings. But having an awareness and paying attention that you need to channel that in a more creative, positive way. So that's why it's so important. So you matter. Learn yourself how to connect with your own loved ones. So I'm going to have everyone close their eyes and listen to what I ask you to visualize. I want you to see your loved one's face in your mind's eye or more than one. Whoever pops up in your mind's eye, just allow that vision to come in and see them. So it's dad that's passed. Okay, what's your name? Erica. Erica. Er did you write a letter or write? Um, I see some writing. So, and it feels like it's something that you may have done either. May, maybe when he was sick or after his passing. There's I, I'm going to say that it may not be in the traditional sense, Erica. Something written. Okay. I know exactly what it is. For Christmas, we always decorate the house for Christmas. Like, we win the citywide contest every year. And this year, since my dad died, <laughs> I wrote, I love you, Dad, on the roof so uh, you can see it. <laughs> he knows that you did that. So you wrote... I love you and put it on the roof? Yeah, it lights. It was like the whole roof was lit up. All I keep seeing is your dad smiling. Yeah, that's him. He so was, he was he, he's not saying anything. He's just got a huge smile on his face. Well, that's good because he wasn't sure where he was going. <laughs> uh, and that's the truth. He was so worried. He, he so was. worried. <laughs> Until the day he passed, he was just so worried. He didn't want to leave because he wasn't sure where he was going. <laughs> That's pretty funny. That's <laughs> <laughs> he made us all laugh. Thanks, Dad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, he made everyone with a big smile on their face. Yes. So I, w I feel like I want to say that he has a great sense of peace coming, coming through. I don't feel a heaviness around him, so he's happy that he made it. And... <laughs> <laughs> so cute. <laughs> That's great. Uh, he he's not saying a word. He just it's just like he's grinning from ear to ear. I, I'm that telling would, you. That'd be him. Mine says understanding, and it says there is a current situation that requires your understanding. It's not a personal issue about you. It's about the lessons needed to be learned from the experience. Um, walking in the redwoods or nature will be very helpful. A blue butterfly is your symbol of support. Um, I just went to my first Compassionate Friends meeting on mm -hmm. Tuesday, and it was very difficult for me to go back into group and be with other people who had lost their children. And um, they talked about the symbol of compassionate friend being a butterfly that our, our lost ones are. Oh, she's got the are, are, are It's the a blue butterfly. Are. The compassionate friends is blue butterfly. And I actually shared a story um, about how I went with a friend who had lost his mother, and I had lost my son. And we intentionally went to this place out in the Central Coast where they're supposed to be beautiful butterflies and they said well you're kind of late but you might see one or two and we didn't see any and I just kept saying one's gonna show up and just as we were walking out of I don't wouldn't say it was redwoods this blue butterfly floated by and my friend just shook his head at me like he couldn't believe it and then when we got to the car there was a butterfly on his car and I said there's your mom and wow so I Definitely can relate to this. And Karen, thank you. wow. And your symbol is a blue butterfly? A blue butterfly. Wow. Yeah. That's thank you. amazing. You're very welcome.